Things that we don't really need any dedicated equipment for are, are a great place to start. And then also we look at equipment that is easy to store, that's small, so that right. we can fold it down, stack it up, put it in its own space and kind of have it out of the way. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Flaghouse Sensory Channel. I'm your host, Chris. This week I'm here with Claire Heffern from the Inspired Treehouse, and we're looking at sensory in small spaces, mm -hmm. and sensory play in small spaces in particular, because not everybody has this fantastic gym that you guys have to right. work in, and so you're working in a much smaller environment. Yep. So why is this topic so important, and, and what are some great ways that we can uh, get around the space problem? Yeah, so this is a really popular topic on our blog because so many teachers, therapists, and parents are up against that challenge of providing the sensory input to the kids who need it with very limited space. So they might have, they don't have a lot of open space in their classroom to work with. Um, therapists like myself are used to working out of a supply closet or in the hallway sure. very often. We don't have um, our own dedicated sensory gym. Mm -hmm. um, and then also not having a lot of storage. So teachers, parents, and therapists can all relate to that, right? They, there isn't a whole lot of um, place to fold things down and put them away and still have the space sure. open for learning. So what is the best way for us to provide that sensory input in a small space? Yeah, so just really getting creative about the different types of equipment that we use. So there are different ways we can do this. First, we can do activities that don't require any, any equipment at all. And so we'll do animal walks, we'll do um, bear hugs, wall push-ups and chair dips, things that we don't really need any dedicated equipment for are, are a great place to start. And then also we look at equipment that is easy to store, that's small, so that right. we can fold it down, stack it up, put it in its own space and kind of have it out of the way. And then also having different types of equipment that can be used in multiple ways. So if you have one thing, you can use it for multi providing multiple different types of sensory input. Absolutely. So we've got a good selection of products here today. What are some of the ways that you're going to use this? Yeah, so we have, there are so many good ones here. We love the Bilibo for providing vestibular input. So that's, you can use this in multiple ways. You can use it for providing um, alerting input by doing spinning and less predictable movements. For kids who need that calming movement, you can kind of use it as a rocker, or you can just let kids explore on their own and kind of see um, how they provide the sensory input they need on their own. We have the gel floor tiles. These are great for creating obstacle courses. So it's a really nice kind of sensory experience that appeals to multiple systems because there's a visual component to it, there's a tactile component to it, and certainly you can use it to create different movement experiences for kids. And they're flat, so they store away really easily. You can push them Perfect. underneath the cabinet or keep them out of the way. Yep. Pop tubes are probably one of my all-time favorite therapy tools. They're great for providing proprioceptive input, so it's pu pushing and pulling against resistance. Um, and then it makes that awesome popping sound too, so um, you can kind of um, hit the auditory system with that as well. And they're so small, you can throw them in your bag and take them. And, and, and they're also very cost-effective, yeah. these ones too. They're yeah. not an expensive piece of equipment, which right. is always a big concern exactly too. Exactly right. So we use these a lot. Yep. And then we also have the tactile discs, which, which are awesome because they have two different sets. So you have the smaller ones which are super easy to throw in your bag and they store away really easily and it can create lots of different sensory activities when you pair them with the larger discs too so you can do an obstacle course where kids are barefoot and they have to feel what's on these tiles and match to the one um, the smaller tile that feels the same way and then again they come in their own storage bag so they're really easy to store away and you can use them for lots of different purposes. Fantastic so we've got lots of different activity ideas here and Claire even has even more on the blog that is at the Inspire Trio so we're going to put the link down in the description so you guys can go and check that out as well too. Claire, thanks again for all these great ideas for sensory and small spaces. And remember, if you like this video, please make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel. We always have new content every single week. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.